Up to this point, we've gone over how to navigate the Final Cut Pro 10 environment, import assets, keep organized, work the timeline, use editing tools as well as the different editing types, and in the last segment, you learned how to apply effects, choose and create presets, and copy and paste one or more effect attributes. In this segment, we'll cover transitions, including the tools you'll use to control and apply them. Plus, we'll go over how to adjust transitions and all of the different transition types. You'll find the Transitions browser up in the middle of your screen on the light gray bar all the way to the right where this box is with the little triangles. If you click on that, it brings up your Transition browser. Your Transition browser can also be accessed by going up to Window, Media Browser, and then choosing Transitions. So now that we have this open, you'll want to see which transition you want to use. And if you just scrub over the top of your transition, you'll be able to see what that transition is going to look like on their sample A, B video. And so we'll go from here, we'll take a look at these arrows, which are kind of cheesy, to these bands and whatnot. Maybe this bloom transition and this is in reverse. And so maybe we decide we want to put a cross dissolve in and it's just easy as dragging and dropping. So you just grab that transition and you can drag it right there on the place where you want the transition and let go. And now if we play it, the transition has been applied. Very simple, but maybe you want to do it in one less step. So let's go back to our edit point and let's apply the default transition. So pressing command T, we'll add a transition there. Now this is your default transition and right now the default is set to cross dissolve. It's real easy if you wanna change that default, all you have to do is go over to the transition that you wanna make the default, choose it, and you can either right click or control click and it'll give you the option make default. Sorry, it's off the screen, I will show you again shortly. Now when I come over here to my edit point, I press command T and now it's given me a bloom transition as my default. And it's easy as just going back over to your whatever else you want to change and making it the default. So I wanna go back to cross dissolve. I'm gonna right click on it and make default. And now it's gonna go back up to the menu and it's gonna be always this first transition in your all folder is gonna be your default. Now say you wanna change the default duration of your transition. So right now it's probably set up at like maybe one second or so. So let's take a look at those changes. So we'll go command comma, and it'll bring up our playback tab here. And it's gonna give us our other options, which are import, editing, and destinations. And we'll go to editing. And we'll go and see, you can see the transition is set up here one second and you can change all of these by just clicking on the numeral that you want to change and going up or down or just typing in five and now it's five seconds. You can do that to whatever length you want. So once you close that box, now if I come over to this transition area and I go command T, it's going to add a five second transition, which is now very, very long. So we're going to go back and change that. I'm going to delete that, press command comma going to come up here. I'm going to change this back to one because it's more usable for my needs here in this edit. And I'm going to close it. And now that's back to my default transition time duration. So once you've applied a transition, let's apply another one. We'll grab cross dissolve again, and we're going to put it between these two cuts. Say I want to adjust the transition more precisely. Well, I can use the precision editor just like I could with on a cut is if I double click on the transition area, it brings up the transition editor. Now I can make the transition longer. I can move where it is. As well, I can move what part of the clip or the length of the clip within this view as well. That gives you a lot more control. I'm gonna go close Precision Editor. I'm gonna undo that. The last thing that we should cover within the adjustments here is if you have a clip that you wanna start right off the beginning of that clip, that clip you started rolling and you needed the very front of that video. This is gonna cause a problem when you wanna do a transition because there's no time for it to go into if your action starts right off the bat. So let's take a look at this so you can really see what it means. I'm gonna go to my favorites here and I have a clip in the subway here and it starts right off the bat. I'm going to grab the whole clip at the front of this clip. Right off the bat, right when I started pressing record, I want to use that part of the clip. Now if I put a transition on it right now, so command T, it's going to bring up this 
window here and it's going to say there is not enough extra media beyond clip edges to create the transition. So there's no time before this clip starts right now for it to apply the transition to. Do you want to overlap or ripple trim your media to create the transition? This will decrease the total duration of your project. What it'll do is actually move that clip to the left to earlier in time so that it actually can apply the transition so there's an amount of space for that transition. Let's take a look at what that looks like. We're gonna go create transition. And so you can see the whole clip moved over. Now, if I go into the precision editor and double click on my transition, you can see the beginning of my clip is right here. So what it had to do is move the front of my clip over so I had a place for the transition to happen. So if I try to make this wider, I'm unable to do so. Now I can still change the endpoint, and then if I do that, I'll be able to make it wider. But if you didn't shoot with handles, and by handles I mean enough space before the important information happens in your video clip, then you're going to have to run into this issue and you're going to have to make choices based on that. Really the lesson learned is shoot more handles to expect to deal with these issues. So if you shoot longer before you actually need the meat of your shot, you're going to have something to grab to be able to do these types of transitions and make them longer or what have you. Now let's go over all the different transition types and let's take a look at what they look like. So I have a issue here. I'm going to close, delete this transition. I have an issue here where I'm going to a shot that's of some hands holding a GoPro Hero 4 to some hands that go to holding a Sony action cam. And the problem is, is it's pretty much a jump cut between the two. So I'm going to need to use a transition here to distract from the jump cut so it doesn't seem as obvious. So what I want to do is I'm going to choose a bloom transition for this. And so I can grab a bloom transition and I can put it here. Now if we watch it, it won't appear as bad as just a cut there for the jump cut. Let's take a watch. See how that feels different? Let's get rid of it and you can watch it now with just the cut. It just is a little bit awkward. So let's take a look at all the different options we can use for transitions in general, as well as some that might fix this problem. So let's go into all of our transition types and we can go into blurs. And in blurs, there's quite a few of these that would be uh, useful. You can have this directional one, which kind of blurs sideways, it blurs horizontal. The Gaussian blur just makes everything blurry and then unblurry again. Probably wouldn't use any of the rest of these blurs. You possibly maybe the simple one because it's just a fast blur, but the pan and zoom is they're a little distracting they're a little intense there are specific uses that you might want to use for them but in general they're not going to be the best choice now let's go into dissolves now dissolves you can do well there's three options here and two of them are going to be ones that you might use all the time so cross dissolve we already went over that it just dissolves fading the opacity of one and raises the other and then fade to color which is just going to help you like fade to black or fade up from black. And this divide one, you can see it here, it kind of makes tiles and is very specific use. You might have a need for it, but you're gonna wanna be very deliberate when using those. Don't just get willy nilly and just adding that transition. It's a little much and needs a purpose if you're gonna use it. Next, let's look at lights. Now in lights, there actually are four of them that you might use. You have bloom, which is gonna take a blur and a light bloom and make your transition. The flash, which is just gonna use light. You have lens flare, which is gonna be a lens flare that gets brighter till the whole screen is filled to cover up the edit. And then light noise, which is kind of a pretty one, but this is gonna be a lot more specific. And then static, which I wouldn't use, it's gonna have that very specific use. Now lastly, there's really only one other type of transition that would be used most often. All the other ones are gonna have very specific uses and this is gonna be in movements. And this is just gonna be pushing one screen over the other, which is called slide. So we're gonna move down here and we're gonna find slide. And you'll see that it just pushes one screen over the top of the other. And you might use that, it's subtle, but all the rest of these are either cheesy or have a very specific use. And that's transitions. In our next segment, we're gonna be covering titles and graphics.